Welcome to Electron Online. In the previous video, we determined that the acceleration due to gravity inside the sphere is equal to g, the mass of the object, the big object like the Earth, divided by the radius of the object cubed times the distance from the center to the surface. And so we end up with that linear relationship. But then once we're outside the surface and we continue to move away from the planet, then we can see that the acceleration due to gravity becomes proportional to 1 over the distance squared. So when you're at the surface of the object, then g will be 9.8 meters per second squared, of course, if the object is the Earth. But if you're twice as far away, it will be 9.8 divided by 4. Three times as far away, it'll be 9.8 divided by 9, and four times as far away, it'll be 9.8 divided by 16, and so forth. So you can see that the acceleration due to gravity and the force of gravity drops off as a function of 1 over r squared, which is rather quickly. So if you then realize that the force of gravity is g, the, the universal gravitational constant times the product of the two masses of the two objects divided by the distance between the two objects squared, and of course that's the distance between the center masses of the two objects. Then, if you set f equals to mg, the little m's cancel out, and the acceleration due to gravity then simply becomes g m over r squared, or of, of course you can write as, so, as follows, you can say g is equal to g times m, the universal gravitational constant times the mass of the object, the Earth, the Moon, whatever it is, times 1 over r squared, and that's a terrible looking r, let me correct that. There we go, that's a better looking r. And so simply it's a constant times 1 over r squared, if you want to look at it that way. And that's how we look at the acceleration of gravity outside a solid sphere.